can't pay I don't want Babylon to steal your way You better not give in to them false lies Consciousness we have to just open up your eyes Hi guys, um, we are on Carlo Culture today. I'm gonna be opening us. Okay, restart part two, part two. Hi guys, go, go, say go. We are going to be. This I'm opening pop. Uncle Daniel, shh. I'm gonna be opening the Carlo Culture for Uncle Daniel right now. Yeah, and so, yeah, this is Carlo Culture part four. No, six. do your math right. What episode is this? this? Is part five. Part six, right? No. Seven? Hello, yes. Oh, this is part seven, actually, my bad. Um, and you guys will learn a lot of great things from these two fathers that are farmers. Thank you. Thank you, Angeline. You're welcome, Daniel. Oh my goodness. We're gonna share. She like share. Oh yeah. Yeah, what we get? What we get? Read them first. What we get. Okay. Oh, Paul, you had one, yeah? Being a Kahlo yeah, Farber's you. daughter by Lillian Nahoy. Walking through the Lo'i and seeing everything that we have accomplished is what makes every time pulling weeds in the blazing sun, planting at only mo new moons during the summer, spending days harvesting and processing Huli worth it. I vividly remember having Aina days where we didn't leave till the sun went down or staying overnight to plant. Growing up with such experiences led me to think that it was a task to go to the Lo'i. My parents is all... My parents have always told us that what we do in the Lo'i affects our entire Lahui. And I never understood what that meant until this past year. People had panicked and food was a security we no longer had, or so it seemed. As lines got longer at stores, we spent more time in the Lo'i. My father and I sat down and we spoke about how all the work we've been doing for my entire life was for a reason. And it was to sustain, sustain us and our community. We had pulled 10,000 huli and gave it away to everyone who wanted huli. This past year, I recognized that we were told to be apart because of COVID, but our law hui has become more united and stronger. The Aloha spirit had come more prominent in each and every ohana. It gave me pride in what we were doing uh, as an ohana, and it made me feel like I was making a change. Because we are active Kalo farmers, we have the responsibility to help our law hui being more self-sufficient food-wise. Kalo is our elder brother or our kuana, and he serves us if we do the same. We must take our blessings big as big or as small as they are. Uh, we are the most isolated state, and if our primary food resource is insufficient, we have the assets to help ourselves and others. Kalo is a starch, and it may not be, seem like glamorous or luxurious, but it's one of our primary sources of starch as, as a kanaka. Like our kupuna, always had an umeke of poi on our dining table, we should all have one. Kalo is a superfood, and it's what our diet surrounded us on. And us as Kalo farmers, we are trying to revive that. We are giving everyone at least an opportunity for a different source of starch with Hui Aloha Aina Mamona. Oh, mic drop. Yes, sir. And the only thing I disagree with is if you ever saw this girl's dad in yeah, Malo, you, you know that it's glamorous and luxurious. Yeah. <laughs> Glamorous and luxurious. Yeah, um, if you ever seen this man in a model, it is both glamorous <laughs> and luxurious. <laughs> <sighs> yes, sir. Carlo Couch. Yes, sir. What's up, man? What's up, uncles? Love you. <sighs> Love How you, you doing? Bro. Love good, bro. Oh, good. oh, you left one big tarot last week, uncle. That, was... that just will let you know that that, that tarot wouldn't cruise with us. Yes, sir. This week, uh, did we we planted, we cleared. You pulled some taro this week, uncles. We pulled a whole bunch of taro. That was some pretty good taro. Honestly, we cleaned it and we pounded it today. That kapa aloha. Oh, and you yeah. know what? Yeah. You know what? It was the. kapa aloha and lihi lihi molina, yeah? Yes, sir. Ha <laughs> ha. From after the cook, I could tell mm. which was which. And they both was super starchy yes, and sir. solid. Uh, that particular lihi lihi molina, I think maybe going f 14, 15 months. That one um, tastes like not enough. So just to let you know. We're out of town. Whoever came today, we got to fill. We got to feed it. Auntie Farron eating from this. Yes, Uncle sir. Momi get. Uncle Kael gonna eat. We all, we all this week. Bless, bless. We're blessed with, with, Super with blessed. beautiful Carlos. Yes, sir. Super blessed. What else did we do, Uncle? Um, I know you've been cutting. Tell me where you've been cutting because I never <laughs> see. Well, <coughs> uh, yeah. Uh, 
yeah, we're not waiting anymore. So I mean, put up a new destination that we can go for, yeah? Uh, in between the far one, make small one, and easy, easy, just like the shovel, we get to the big. And so I just think we'll make one out of puka. Okay, so cups. pay me this picture. We're at the end of the corner. Okay. Okay. Which, by the way, I jumped in the corner this week, <laughs> and it's shallow. So, yeah, note to self, what? don't <laughs> suicide off the corner. Could high break ground, your neck. The high ground, Kai side. So, I went, you went around the corner, mm -hmm. and then you went on the opposite end, and you went Makai of that. Yep. Mean. On both okay. sides of the corner, get mud. Yeah? Like how yep. we've seen. Yep. Yeah, we've seen. So, went on the high side of the Kai side. Okay. Okay. Side, I don't know. Maybe like 40 by 40. <coughs> uh, pap, pap. This uncle, he came extra dangerous when he got one still chainsaw. If any of you guys out there um, are connected to still, we want to be your partner. We Stop want still it. chainsaw. You know, you know, interesting. All of these cultures that came in the olden days, yeah, the Germans, they came to Hawaii very early. So there's an old relationship from the Hawaiian kingdom to Germany. In fact, in a German university was the Cook Forrester collection. Hmm. So somewhere in Germany at a university has the largest intact pre-contact collection of artifacts of the Pacific. And um, still, if you're out there, come, please contact Uncle Cowan and, 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 and we, me and Uncle Cowan, we want to be, be partners with you guys and teach others how to chainsaw, yeah? Yeah. I just have to make that note. Definitely. Let us know. <laughs> Sorry. As I was mentioning, Uncle Cowan, he's... He's amazing because how he attacks how. Like when someone asks you if you know how, <laughs> this uncle know how, mm -hmm. Uncle Danny Bishop know how. Like there's a certain way to cut how. How for them. So basically now we can go across, go to the other side and start. Well, we're going to fence. <clears throat> I don't know. This time we're going to use... Um like how we built my friend's house on Big Island. I mean, imagine a tape, tape them off and just gonna chop down all the trees and use that in and out, weave them in, weave them out. I say currently weaving them in, weaving out of one four foot high stump. Instead of cut the whole thing down, leave one four foot high stump and that's my pillar and my post. But last little while, uh, while we make the thing, before we get there, all of the mulch and everything can go inside there and start to rot before we get there. Hear the complexity of that, you guys. This guy's talking about, as he's cutting down the forest, he's selecting out which trees to leave that are gonna be a part of a living fence that he uses the debris that he's cutting to build the fence. Simultaneously as he's doing that, he's able to take the leaf litter and put the leaf litter in the patch area, which is actually suppressing weeds and feeding the taro patch for future. So this is like some one stroke kind Musashi Maru, same, uh, kind. same kind, one stroke, which is a part of taro farming when you're doing it hard, that you really emphasize and, and put a lot of wisdom into how you do things. Yeah, a lot of it comes from doing things again and again, yeah, um, or, or do, having to move the pile because you never think ahead of where you was putting the logs. I mean, uh, uh, what they tell? What is uh, 2020? Uh, hindsight. Yeah. Hindsight. Hindsight. Always, yeah. Yeah. And now, and I can do that again, right? So, that's a new one. New one. No, I like it. Yeah. Because we've, it's a reality. If you don't have a fence, the pigs eat your taro. Yeah. But how are you going to bring the fence across the kuona to the other side of right. the kuona? And we need materials, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not that bad though. At four feet, one guy can stand, two or three guys can stand in the water and we can pass the fence over to the other side. Sure, now that we know. Now that we know. Yeah. <laughs> know your space, <laughs> right? And this is super important in, in taro farming is you really got to know your space, which, which ultimately means, and I had to take the pill this week, sometimes you got to jump in the water. How long we been over there? We've been over there three years. We never did jump in this one particular water. And I'm going to be... I I was scared, Kawe. <laughs> I was scared to, to go inside there for many reasons. One reason, 
Like I seven did, reasons. I did put some oink crabs in there. <laughs> so I know that there was definitely some oink crabs Darn growing in there. Seven. The second reason, right, it looks like if I was like a legendary ancestral mo where I would hang out. Oh, and I right still there. I still think maybe um three you know what I seen some big frogs. I seen I seen I can't, turtles. Can't, turtles. Frog. I seen all kind my imagination gets snakes live in there. <sighs> um and I don't definitely do not like I mean I had good reasons. <laughs> None of us knew he was going to do that. He did that. like, what are you doing? It was, <sighs> yeah. Um, all right, Uncle. So you cleared out that area in the same area. This was the first time that we ever pulled out slabs. We soaked slabs in Kahana. Ever. This That's is the first awesome. soaking of slabs in Kahana. The first harvesting of slabs. Mm -hmm. These three slabs all go in Big Island. So... In, inland fish pond in Kahana connected to Big Island. Major connections. Major connections. Without plenty of the connections, the existing one might not exist. That was nice to have those Big Island young boys help us bring them back. Yeah. Thank you, Kikua, and mahalo, mahalo. the young boys with the strong backs that would help lift them out of the water and super important. I think this is a multi-generational thing, you know? Just when learn how for them. I think the first time they're seeing this and, you know, this thing of soaking wood was only one thing we read about or heard about. We didn't actually, f our, our first-hand experience was doing it. And so we had no baseline of any sort we had to figure it out right, right and then right, you right. kind of unravel it and unlock it well these guys they already get uncles that can help them be more precise in it and not have to go through all of the I, you know the little lessons I, you, we just give them awesome. a big one hurry I like up to, i like to take off the bark at this point yeah yep so many people at that point go save on or no what they do is they try to take off the bark in the beginning and they fight them mm -hmm. and then they spend all of their time eating off the bark in the beginning and then they try soak them and then the board look ugly instead of having that nice just under the bark finish you know where you barely got to do anything and then if you take off the bark and you soak them then that part comes stink yeah then that becomes the part that you feel off. Yeah. So now, now you just did it. Now that part no come stink, and you gotta you gotta take off the top and the bottom anyway. Hmm. So it's a gift. Good week. How's the poi this week? The can I was delicious, huh? Mm. Super ono, super ono gone. The the fresh the fresh water. Thank you to the Ohana yeah, can, still farming in can I can taste the water. Bago ono. Yeah, good for yeah. the flavor change every once in a while, uh, yeah? It's good to get the flavor change and like good to no taste that because you don't have the water flowing, yeah. Um, you know, big ups to all of our family up there. Um, scrapping for water um, and your water flow, yeah. Um, yeah. Important, yeah? Super important that and, and you know, keep fighting for them and keep doing your things, guys. All right, uncles. I have a rough topic today, but I think it's an important topic. It's a topic that nobody wants to talk about. Yeah? Because it probably sucks to talk about these topics. But it's a topic of racism and why you should be racist or not racist. Because um, I think in some cases, racism is good. If a certain type of person always going to inflict pain upon your family, when you see that person, you know what I'm saying? Like, is the gazelle racist of the tiger? Hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The gazelle see the tiger, the tiger. Well, I'm out of here. Yeah. Because there's a there's a track record. You, you see. So you know, I want to talk about this topic because this is a topic. You know, I I want to use the big H word, but I don't know if it's politically correct. You know, I might make some Caucasians angry. Um, but when is it appropriate to say howler? You know, is is it a derogatory term? Is it something that you know? Somehow we demonize in our minds certain things in our life. And as we grow up, 
this is one of those topics that I want my children to see later on in life. And hopefully we've done something to help them be better than us. Yeah, bro. And particularly in the avenue of judging people by what they do and not what they look like. But it's hard because certain people look a certain way and then they act a certain way. And they make it easy to codify that because... You know, when they, they, the Caucasian makes it easy to not like Caucasians because of the thing that they do. And I give you the prime example. The guy in Kailua that took down the Hawaiian flag on July 4th, right? Here's a, a Caucasian ball ahead man with a collared shirt taking down on Hawaiian flag in Kailua. And it's that imagery it makes it easy. That reinforces why you wouldn't like a certain type of people because that's what you expect. But in our group, I hear that we don't like a whole bunch of people. We just don't like people. Ooh, touchy subject. I'm sorry, Uncle stuff. Fobas, this kind of subject, but no, I, no, I, I feel like... Good stuff. You know, nobody really like talking about this. Yeah? Um, you're exactly right, you know? I mean, and you cannot use them as an excuse. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of trying to hide behind that shit too, uh, but... Whatever, whatever the number of years keeps growing from the, the event that went happened. Uncle Skippy says it the best, right? Yeah. And <laughs> the, bah, I mean, he said he just puts it in words the best. Um, but that's an individual thing. And bah, that's, a, that's a generational thing that, no, we like break the cycle and we're going to be the one for, for doom and um, if I cannot be the example of how for be better, then let me be the example of how for be the worst fucking one. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you know, like whatever you do, no, do what Uncle Kao did. Yeah, because that was like pretty racist, you know? I'm very judgmental. This is just honest. I'm very judgmental. I judge people on how I think that they might live their life, partly based on what they eat, what they consume what they say, what they do, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's certain types of people out there that naturally you don't want your kids to learn from them. And it's hard to tell your kids not to follow them because they look like, the, the, you know, they look good while they're doing them, right? But how do we navigate this big <coughs> reality? But I think, I think it, 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 cor it has a direct correlation with the, the how separated from the relationship yeah, I mean, it's indirect. The, the thing looked the same. Yeah, and like, how, how, how you, it's one matter of choice, really, really. Yeah, and if you get control over your emotions and your choice, then you can choose not for lash out or choose not for act racist or seem like it, or you're going to be more compassionate or take on extra bread. You know what I mean? Um, on the very same token, if you flip that token on the, on the other side, it's like, like you said, um, on, on the other token is people expect you for have aloha. Sorry, mm -hmm. you want Hawaiian, we expect you. are supposed you. to have. Yeah. And like, hey, what? Um, that's on rough one. You know, that's, that's super like vinegar poi. I know the thing's still healthy for me, but <laughs> I don't really like eat them. <laughs> you know, I would kind of use this. I would use this as an example the other day about. You know, in Hawaii, yeah, there's been like racially, right? If you just, if you were to look at blood quantum, right? What, the more Hawaiian that you are, the, do you have more right to be racist? Because you have had had more pain inflicted upon you, right? These are, I mean, these are some of the stupid questions no, that I no. ask because as a non-Hawaiian nah. growing up in a Hawaiian household, <clears throat> one of the things that I inherited, yeah, I inherited this at 18 years old. I was racist. I hated Hawleys. My grandfather is pure Caucasian, Austrian, Hungarian, Jewish. Part of me didn't like <clears throat> him because of that. I never liked that he was my grandpa. He was over there in white and I trying to heal Hawaiians. Nah, the truth is, yeah, that I was more racist towards Hawaiians, bruh, than any other fucking group. Yeah. And that's because I wasn't accepted, bruh. And from that day, I had choice. Like, oh, no, baby. I said, no, 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 I'm going to go school with all these. 
I never like have to confirm like that. Yeah. Whatever that meant in my seventh grade year of life. Because I was already brainwashed, right? We was already. Right. Ev Wasn't it being racist, evidence. normalized growing up? So right. I never think about you. Like go to the best possible education and this and that. That wasn't one of the choices. My answer was now nah, I only go to that school because I only go to school in Hollywood. And I, what is what you go, what about you, Lani? It's like nah, mom. I, I don't only go to school with Japanese. Like like straight up. I had friends, all kind of friends at Paul. Yeah, we was a mixed bunch of battles, but pretty much, I just I had my choice. Yeah. And, and she said, mid pack, what is that? My answer was, do they play against Kamel Mel? And that was my drive. Like, mom, so sore inside this. I like take them out on them. <laughs> they play them. Okay, shoot, I'm going mid pack then. And I'm going to do my best for still being on Kanak and represent what does it mean for being on Kanak? Yeah, and try. Understand racism, man. We like talk about that, you know. My my wife is Okinawan, um, my mom is Okinawan, pure Okinawan. My my bachan is Okinawan, and I mean, like talk about racism. Yeah, 1901 is when the first Okinawan person came here, but it was part of camps. Yeah, that uh, you know why it was. You know why? I like, read this shit. Why America and choose that particular places for bomb? I don't know, but. That's two major places, number one and number two, where the people from Japan came from. Yeah? <laughs> and, 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 but Okinawans wasn't counted as one of the Japanese. Yeah? And crazy. Read this literature, crazy. And the crazy shit is... What, what book is that? I think I... The book. one in um, Ka'u, from Ka'u. Oh, I cannot remember the book. but At some point, you guys, in this link, we're going to leave the notes on what book this is because this, this is uh, important that some of our perspectives were researched. Yeah. Like, we've not only experienced this pain that's been <laughs> passed on, you know, when you it's live in a... Multicultural uh, uh, kind of A stuff. household, yeah, there's all of these different races, <laughs> all had a terrible time, came to Hawaii, at some point made their big break. Yeah, even, even guess what? You know the sailors, like the guys that left Europe were not, maybe the captain might have been well-to-do, but the sailors themselves were ultimately entrepreneurs looking for something better. Yeah? And and so they came, all of these guys came to Hawaii, Stanford B. Do, you look at who are these guys before they came here? They came here and endured hardship and somehow flipped it around and changed the whole landscape of their people. Right. I mean, we have examples in Hawaii's history where certain races during certain eras were very effective in all kinds of, you know, sales. There was an era where the Chinese dominated. They were in real estate. Yeah. They were in all of these things. It was the era of the Japanese, awesome. right? The yeah. 442. And, and, and there was the, obviously the era of the, of the missionary son and daughter. Sure. That was much later though, too. But. Yeah. The stuff we're talking about is crazy. Each stuff. generation, though, as that era happened, did it on the backs of somebody, right? And ultimately, the trickle down effect was the somebody was the Hawaiians. Oh, so you know, honestly, Uncle, I make excuses sometimes for certain people being indifferent to other people. Is like, bro, you should just look at brother's history. Like you happen to fit into a mold of a certain type of people that have continually through the last seven generations negatively impacted this brother. You you don't think he would be a little bit wary of you. Yeah, and everybody that moved here yesterday always sees Hawaii as the best version of Hawaii that they'll ever see it. But at that moment, right, the tourist that flies in today sees Hawaii for the first time and it is the best version that they'll ever see it. But to the Kanaka that's living here right now could be the worst version of Hawaii that they've ever seen. And it is the same place and the same time. So our perspectives are not the same. No. Right? And here, the challenge that we face, yeah, and I, and I say this as a challenge, a personal challenge, right? In saving our home, if it was only Hawaiians that want to donate, but uh, we, go, we would be homeless. We'd be sleeping on your couch right now, Uncle Kao. That's just the truth. But is there enough Hawaiians that if each of them gave a dollar, could we have saved it? Super easy. Yes. 
But is the reality of that is that there's more good people in the world that want to help than there are bad people that live in Hawaii. But the bad people that live in Hawaii make everybody in the else in the world look bad based upon, you know, how the hell we get the worst Caucasian, the worst Chinese, the worst Japanese. Somehow they, they end up in Hawaii and they've all done terrible things at the expense of Hawaiian people and their culture and this place. Yeah, and everyone's overlooked it for their own personal, right? For me, I... Uncle Kao, you like, you know, like in life, like you get um, things that you get to see and witness. Yeah. And for see somebody that is able to use their, as they deepen their connection to the Aina and what they do, it breaks their plane of who they thought they are. Yeah. Because you build up this sense of who you are in life. And then if you like most of us, I include myself in this, at some point you're pretty disappointed that all the stuff that you did really didn't equal to what you had hoped it would really feel. Yeah, like when I was working in the stone company at Bella Pietra, at the peak of it is when I was treated the worst by people that I loved. It was making the most money, the most but it was money. the shittiest feeling to go to work. And <laughs> to see the opposite occurring, to see somebody at their going into their best, going into the breakthroughs. You know, when you get to see someone break through, it's an amazing thing. It helps you break through. Because sure. if everybody around you is happy with where they're at, there's a good chance that you might be happy with where you're at. But if everybody around you is making their own breakthroughs, yeah, that, that personally pushes you. And like in your relationship, in our relationship, uncle, you push me to, to deal with things that if you was to ask me, did I want to experience and maybe deal with that? I might have told you no, but after experiencing and doing it, I'm like, fuck, I don't know how I could be me without that. Amen. Because that helped me to grow in a way that once again, if we want our children to be better than us, then we got to digest some of these hardships. Yeah. And as a, no, as a, and that's the thing. I think that's the decision make right there is, yeah, like making this decision to be the one, like for real. And if and you start from maybe just in your family first, yeah, and then amongst your the little extended family, and fuck us all, we can really really change us, just our immediate family, and hopefully we influence other people in a positive way based on example, not by. <laughs> Being told how for do them and what for do because number one map and number one answer, yeah, get the journey. But you journeying, uncle. We journey. The we journey. journey. Get the journey. You know, you know to bring it back around about racism, bro. That's exactly too. Like we we let's not pretend like this this big white elephant no exists in the room everywhere we go, yeah. And um, I think as adults, once we become parents, then we get one decision. If if just right in your your pico. That you can eliminate and try for eliminating, bring on consciousness to your baby, where the baby's at. Yeah? Like, baby, you know, daddy got mad about this shit for this, this, and you know all the reasons, baby, but maybe your reaction or get one lesson in this shit someplace and your, your delivery. <laughs> well, my, it's my problem, it's delivery. Uh, but. The, I also the, think, the, Uncle, the, <laughs> and it's not on problem, but over here, we deal with so many new people. And so we really relate well to other people from Hawaii. You know, brother Adam, who came here earlier today, mm -hmm. who had that crazy project. Yep. It's so different to relate to this guy to do this project. <laughs> Where, you know, like when we, when we speak, we get see the same picture. Mm -hmm. And so many new people inundate us, right? We look in our circle and we look at some of the people that, that challenge us the most. Our people that are not Kama'aina. And there's so many not Kama'aina <laughs> people right now in Hawaii, right? There's places like Kauai that have more than 50% of the population was not even born on Kauai. Yeah, and, and as we try to navigate this concept of aloha and how to treat each other, Stewardship, right? Yeah. We just get, we get diluted, right? And there's that saying like, when in Rome, make like the Romans. Well, if you're a foreigner and you move into a new place... 
and all it is is foreigners, then whichever foreigner was there that can make up the best is who everybody act like. Right? I mean, you know, how do we influence people? And this is one thing that I don't want to say you and I, this is a continual thing, right, uncles? Continual thing where we both are so opposite. This is what actually I love about our relationship. Yeah, if you ask me and Uncle Kyle the same question, we're going to tell you the exact same different answer. Okay, exact same different answer every time because we both looking at the question from two different angles. Yeah, if the car broke down, Uncle Kyle, I might look start looking at the at the exhaust system first. Uncle Kyle will look at the hood. Like we're looking at the problem from two. We're going to come to the same conclusion. Yeah, yeah. But how we engage it is absolutely different, right? And so I am always trying to get you to engage more people and influence more people. And I feel like half the time you're trying to get me to engage less people and be around less people. And and for all the right <laughs> reasons, right? Uncle Carl's like, brah, no half dummies around you. People are using you. I can perceive this. I can help. We don't even waste our time. Oh, but right? yeah. That's, like what, that's, what that's the kind about. of lessons that's that, that about, Uncle Carl con continue you know, telling me. Like, yeah, hey, these spidey senses, bro. Cut, cut the line on these guys. Like you, like you almost, like, cause... But my theory is, my theory is, you got to go through the many to find the willing. Yeah? So I anticipate cutting bait on a huge percentage of people that influx through us. That's just my mentality. I'm like cold calling sales calls. And the, 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 the one yeah, out yeah. of the 30 yeah. people that said yes, I'm going to focus my attention on that, right? Because boom, that was an Uncle Kael. Uh, that was an Uncle Skyler. Right out of all the different people that came over here. And Uncle Kyle, let's be honest. There's a lot of donkeys that stop by too. Yeah, and then almost 100% of the time, 100% of the time, Uncle Kyle is right when he when he get the feeling that, eh, cut bait on this guy. I got to listen sooner because the last guy he was he was ragging on me was an uncle living here that was end up, he was doing drugs and stealing from us. Yeah, and had I listened to Uncle Kyle, and you know what the best part is? That uncle was Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah it wasn't legend. even, wasn't even, was someone that we were in love was taking legend. advantage of us, yeah? Yeah, so that's why I'm so, internally, I am confused. Because some of the people that have hurt me the most have been Hawaiians. And in this whole thing for Save My House, if it wasn't for non-Hawaiians, we wouldn't have saved it. That's so a, The complete opposite of you is, is dude, I, I loud, I, I, I make any kind so that you, I keep you at bay, dude. Yeah, I don't like you come to know me. And intimately in in me, uh, really, really, uh, until I know you, and I know you care about that part, yeah, yeah. That, um, that we're gonna share, yeah. Now you're just trying for download some information, bro. Like fucking beat it, you know. Come in, come stand by me, some toil. Come, come try, and and it's, I don't know, is it the the fuck. You know, Uncle Carl. Dad, hear, hear him say shit like, you know, but I seen my mom guys give up. Um, the trying for being Hawaiian. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't making it. Yeah, it wasn't doing it anymore. So everybody had to bail. Lana got abandoned. I mean, not, not, that's nobody's fault, but just cause, cause. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't want to leave. Nobody they had to on leave. Their own, yeah. Yeah. Like like Kuleana, when when the Kuleana of a new landowner came, they never realized that the people on the land was part of the land. Like was actually one tree that you had to take care of with, when you when acquire this land <laughs> came with the people. <laughs> yeah, just like the rock, just like the water. This this particular people who were serving this. It, it 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 goes all together, yeah. And when the sister, like, how many years after that? Is that the is that broken? you think you think that's the birth of racism in Hawaii? When a foreigner came and told you that they just bought your land, nah, and then you had to leave. No, like Uncle said, uh, when they went over to the Queen, <laughs> they had help. It was an inside job. I like identify I, I think those that's, people. I think I that's like the truth though, right? Guys, yeah, real quick. Prior to Captain Cook, Hawaiians was killing Hawaiians. 
and fighting each other on a regular basis. There's a reason that these guys from over here don't like those guys from over there because they used to beef. Everybody make like there was legendary treat, treat, wars. Aloha, aloha and right? forgiveness and all of that. No, Makahiki was only three months. Yeah. And only because the gods, we went stop. But dude, So I, here's I, my question. Here's my question. When Makahiki's is, done, is, we're coming. Is hate and racism, are these things misguided energies that are directing us away from being true problem solvers? Right? Because you think about it. The reason, they ne there's a reason they never like the, the guys from over here never like the guys from over there. Because the guys from over there used to come and make people kill. Or there was, a, there was actually a reason. They had a right? reason. Today, I feel like a part of what we're doing, there's like no reason sometimes. Like you just know, no like that guy because that guy looked different. But Thank back you. then, Thank you. there was one reason. Well, even that reason was pretty silly. We went wars over him. You it right? Was pretty much when wahine or oh, 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 water resources. Yeah, get the water. Yeah, get the most kalo. Get the biggest army. Get the most mana. Yeah. Period. Can support the biggest community of followers who love you because you stand next to them in a lot. Not because you tell them what to do, because you show them. Right after the, after the first, I think all of that went away. Because the Ali'i went hemo himself from the Lo'i, actually toiling. You know, Kawa, while you were saying that, I wanted to give super huge shout outs to all the Hawaiian taro farmers and all the non Hawaiian taro farmers. Yeah. I think about the island of Oahu and the, the, the influence that the Rapoons have had. Yeah, Bruh, I think of the influence of, of the many people of Halua, and that's that's something that this is where I want to tie this whole thing in. Uncle Cowboy, on it a, wasn't for non I want to tie it bro. to the taro patch. That one thing is, I never met one Kalo that didn't like the guy taking care of him. And that's the one, right? And two, two, this is important to me, is that the taro patch is the equalizer. So maybe I don't like you. Until you come work in a town patch with us. Yeah? Maybe I should teach that to my kids. Like, hey, no like that person. Just because they never, hey, you in town patch with my dad. No, I don't like you. Period. Yeah? And then at least they give them good reason. No, no. And then hey, the people, that's they... That's not being racist. That's not. No. That's not. No. Okay, maybe. That's, that's racist. Nah. Taroism. <laughs> Taroism. No, that's not. I mean, like, cause... Right, but this is like an important thing as we navigate forward. What are the tools? Because if the tools to eliminate racism and hate is farming together, is connecting to the aina together, is working side by side together, right? If that is the solution, if that's how we can break this, then there's a there's actually a tool, right? And like in your tool chest, your personal tool chest of how do you end hate and racism. Sure. It's I'm going to go to do a Lao Lima work day, a community work day, and we'll work with a diverse set of people in our community, and I'm going to build a relationship on making Hawaii better, right? And then that's a clear avenue, and I'm, I'm stating this as a solution potentially out there to the greater world and community. Like, if you want to come here and find respect from people that have been getting taking advantage of for the last seven generations clearly by certain races like how you break that is to come and put your hands in the soil with those people yeah give earnestly of your sweat equity mm. and build the relationship with the people while working together ultimately true oh. true to older brother so you can show it yeah no show me I just, I just a human still yet, you know. <laughs> I, I feel like we're moving into an era show because of blood quantum, because of this nation with a nation, because of this idea of sovereignty and citizenship and, you know, Hawaiian kingdom citizen and all of these things that the kingdom had already dealt with. But we live with a new set of rules. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately it doesn't matter the set of rules for the last 129 years it doesn't matter the rules the community loses right yeah we get some solutions for this for this i think we get some solutions for that 
yeah, um, in our in our individual communities. I love our ideas about building these community gardens and uh, empowering individuals. Yeah, and um, I mean we've seen the evidence of the investment. Yeah, right in people's backyards, and we've seen like life changing stuff for real kind. And some of our friends and um, you know, Haloa is the one. Aloha is the one that um, has nothing to do with us. You know, I don't, no, they'll no, they take no credit for nothing. You know what I mean? Just try to encourage as much as can to, to, and you know, got to come. You just get your own relationship with them. Yeah. Because it automatically puts you in touch with the land, stuck to water, possibly hearing birds tweeting, looking at the tree. Like Uncle said, and in order for the forest to be green, the trees got to be green. So if everybody take care of themselves. Yeah. Hey, Kalamai, uh, that, that racism one is a major topic, bro. You know, we can talk about that every time, I think so. And we keep talking well, about them. Well, let's, 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 let's talk about some heroes. Yeah, I'm a Hina Ho. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. It's hard being a non-Hawaiian Tara farmer. Because of some of the feeling and resentment in the community Bruh. that you get from the very people that you would think that you're working for and no, trying to help. Nobody can accuse me of being racist, bro. Because all of my closest, closest, closest friends is not Hawaiians, bro. Every single one of them, they all get blonde hair, blue eyes, and tattoos all over their neck. <laughs> wow, why you got to bring Jaja into this? All of them. Tori, we love you, Jaja. Tori, my boys, bro. And you well, know, bro, it's my brothers. Okay, you you confusing and, and what, me, Kawe. And what? Because they're not Coco. That's what I mean about the relationship with Haloa, ba. Yeah, Haloa not racist, ba. But he recognized the guy who stay next to him in the patch. That's all. Yeah. I gotta just recap that. If you never hear and understand what Uncle Kawe is saying, he's saying all his best friends is all non Coco Hawaiians. Yeah. So, for anyone try to accuse him of being racist, they're not seeing through the reality of what it takes to to get past uncle's defense system. Yeah? No feel like uncle no like you. He don't like nobody. Until you come in, you work in the tarot patch. Because the thing that you'll find with all of these people that are close are people that have spent time on the aina. Yeah, and we're in this day and age where I, I really believe in what Uncle Kao is saying. That we got to pre-qualify people. Bro, There's that, so that, many that, people in the world. The racism that you talk about, bro, because you, because of not, you're non Hawaiian, yeah, but you get the meanest relationship with Haloa, but because you know Mokoko, Hawaiians is the worst judges, bro. I know. Yeah, and but guess what, Uncle Kao? None of my kids so I make gonna mad. ever have to deal yeah. with that. Yeah, that's why none of my kids gonna ever have to deal with that because they got all of me. And they're all Coco Hawaii, <laughs> right? And they're going to be hammers. Like, all the, all my weaknesses. <laughs> and all my brothers, they deal with that. And we talk about that. And that thing hurt me more than what I go through. It, it's, one heavy, it's, one hezy, it's one heavy thing. Imagine you know? that. Mine's are not even as sour as that one. But no matter what I do. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is why we bring this topic up today. Is be, this is a serious topic that nobody <laughs> wants to discuss. That all of us are impacted and we all feel every single day as we venture out across Hawaii. Sure. Right? Bro. I mean, the racism is so strong that the different classes give benefit to others in their same visual category. But I think debilitate yeah? people. And, and, and I give you an example, uncle. Stop people from doing things. Bro. You're going to laugh. I get one friend on the big island. He's a Caucasian. When he gets occasion, he gets pulled over by the police. When he looks and he sees it's another Caucasian, he feel all good. When on when a not Caucasian police officer, he's worried, care. <laughs> and this guy's this guy's a very wealthy, well to do Caucasian, born and raised on the big island. Multi generation been down. And that's one yeah, the but same racism right there. That's he, not he, different. He sees in the rear view, it's not a Caucasian police officer. He's like he's worried. He, he think he gonna, he he get anxiety. Yeah? Yes. And and that is that is the truth. It's here in Hawaii. Sometimes, like, you feel uncertain. There's so much diversity that if you're not actually in with that group, you might be out. And, yeah, and being about, in a, such about, a small place. About, let's stop doing that, you guys. Huh? 
<laughs> All right. What Uncle Carl's saying is community work day coming up coming in Kahana. Up. <laughs> We're going to do an event bright. There's going to be a link below that'll tell you guys how to contact us. Actually, we're working on Nevermind Eventbrite. It'll be under inamomona.org. Yeah. And um, we're working on the, the website stuff so that you can sign up for community work days, sign up for community kui, have access to signing up for Ohana Gardens. We'll all be on the website. If you're watching this right now and it's not there, it's soon coming. I do apologize. Check out inamomona.org. If you're on Instagram, you got to check out at Uplift Others, at Kahana Cultural Living, at Vibe with Uncle. Wait, wait, what is yours, Uncle? Hang with Uncle? No. Chill, chill with oh, Uncle. God. Sorry, I get that wrong. We get the Chill with Uncle and Vibe with Uncle, okay? <laughs> um, that's on TikTok. Uh, I'm at at Mana Ai, at Hui Aloha Aina Momona, at Kanaka Poilis, yeah. um, <laughs> at Aloha Organic. We didn't even talk fertilizers because what I found... Is that if you spray people with lactic acid bacteria made from Kalo, they no longer racist. Huh. Yeah, that was my joke of the day. Yeah, so Check that, out AlohaOrganic.org. Aloha Aloha Organic. <laughs> and look up our living, which is lactic acid bacteria. And it might not make your friend less sour, but it definitely take the smell out of those smelly areas of your yard. Now, how's about this? How's about this awesome solutions? How's about this awesome solution? Yeah. It's something that I personally personally do. Yeah, before we go someplace, yeah, before we go on Vahi, uh, whether we guess, most times we guess, because if you're not from there, then all of a sudden you're on guess. <laughs> so, wait, 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 uncle. If I'm not from the place, I'm automatically one guess. Pretty much, yeah. You guys heard that? That's when Olelo no Eo or Uncle Kao. If yeah. you're not from some place, you can guess. Don't forget that. But we all get the opportunity for, like Uncle George Helm said, yeah, for do your homework. <laughs> Seriously. Um, there's so much literature and information That's out there. That's what actually guests do. That you can just Google and do it. Here, I, got, I, I brought, I brought my kai. What you got? Stuff or you mean? Uh, uh, stuff? Omiyagi. No, stuff. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Reference. Reference. So, everybody watching this on, this episode, please go get this on. Yeah? It's a very good book. Please. And then, next, the next time, I see you guys assignment, and then... The questions that you see how we can like start from here and then now the question hey, i can make one i can make one small um observation <laughs> no, I try to what get uncle the, the dog ate your homework no no Shh, you see that <laughs> look and help i get the dog right over here one of my textbooks <laughs> hmm i wonder what happened to the top corner there uncle my textbook where can they buy this if, if they don't Taro Malka to Makai, guys. You know what, you guys? That Taro Malka to Makai is a UH press. You might find it on Amazon, also on eBay. Yep. Um, what is your other book, Uncle? Did somebody, they, they can be, I think they can put all the local vendors. Yeah, like, I think, I, I think they might get the book in the store. Native books might have them. You yeah. might go check out Native books. And you can save a couple bucks on Amazon, but, but I think it wants store, especially right now, yeah? Go spend the extra dollars and go support auntie who's selling the book inside the store for support her business, yeah? Uh, especially if that's on... No even matter if that's on Kanaka. We're all just trying to help each other. We're not trying to be racist, yeah? Because when hurting Hawaiian is on hurting Japanese, on hurting Okinawa, and we're all hurting. <laughs> the next book. Next so, book. It's the homework one, you guys. Yeah, every time Uncle Kao, Uncle Daniel, we go someplace. All right, let's be truthful. Every time we go, Uncle Kao guarantee <laughs> and sometimes uncle daniel right. i just wait till uncle call do them then i get the unabridged version sure. yeah I read them and then i get the safety meeting version time. you know we try walk into somebody as one guest uh with a little bit of information about their place yeah and the place that you're about to go and in this book one of the things that i personally like to do is i like to know the name of the wind and the name of uh the rain wherever yeah because every single place Different names. Sometimes get plenty of places with the same name. And it trips me out. So that's why I pay attention to that. Um, but this part is a, just about Oahu. Sites on Oahu. And inside, get maps. I recommend everybody go get one. Because if you're on Oahu and trying for farm, you're on Oahu and trying to dig up something, get maps inside here of the entire island. Old maps that um, delineate Ahupua'a, ahu, delineate Ili, tell you what the old Kahiko names of a lot of things was. Has heiaus. Has heiaus. 
old structures. I mean, you name it, had archaeologists. And what this is, I think, is a compilation of several people's mana'o. Inside, get information on different things of different areas by multiple sources. Yeah, like Mr. Kamakawa said something about that thing. But somebody else said something about that. And then when Mr. McAllister got there, when he was doing his archaeological survey, thank goodness he went over there because he was able, like one landscaper, I mean, now with, who are the guys that shoot? I mean, what is that profession? The ones that... they, they Surveyor. Got, the surveyors. Yeah, somebody was able to identify how far and what direction and which way the, the walls go and record them so that I can read this information. And when I go to this place... Um, if the wind blow on you, you know the name. If it's raining, you know the name. So automatically, spiritually and physically, and the uhane, you kind of either get welcome or not. Yeah, and that's one not a whole island you can key on. Um, when we was talking about this racism, yeah, is um, being attached to the being attached to these six senses and 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 not letting those little Hawaii lonas and those things that. Don't let them go by. Try to pay attention to them and see if you was right, bro. Because we just want two hoolies away from having that kind ike and having that kind insight, yeah? That um, maybe because we eat the wrong diet or something, that the link and the possibility for still connect to that is just gone, but not gone, gone for good. You know what I, you're making me think about is the connection between racism and ignorance. Yeah, and, and it's easy to be deemed, when you're ignorant, it's easy for people to not like you. Yeah, and when you when a part of your practice is to not get educated, yeah, if your mother never tell you that before you go on one trip to learn about the place that you're going to go to so you don't seem ignorant, right? Then your mom, if she didn't tell you that, then she never prepare you to be received well. And so when you're not received well, it's in part because you didn't get the training that was necessary. Yeah, and what we're trying to deal with the issues is looking forward. How do we make sure looking forward that the people that are gonna come and visit and interact with Hawaii are better versions than the previous generation before? And some of the ending of that ignorance is to know the place, right? Is to do the research really about the people and the understandings of the conditions, right? I mean, literally. I mean, it's such an honor as the host to... When your guest is educated about your place, the kind of conversation that you can have about the place is so much it's deeper and more honor. meaningful. Yes. When, when, and then they come or they do a chant of the place. I mean, in the middle of the chanting of the place, get some of them kids, some of us who stand there and do that for... For the show, some of that do that for the pageantry, and they get some of those ones that is doing them and thinking of the name and the kupunas and and, and yeah, actually like giving reverence. So um, we only can try encourage the maybe spooky yeah, for for going to that psyche, yeah, the ones that is not taught uh, and not encouraged that particular psyche world. Yeah, mama, you know what I mean. But but the bond with them and the thing is just not encouraged, yeah. Like your muscle, if you know, exercise them, yeah. The so that that might harder. also be a common a common um trait is like uh very low spiritualism, yeah. If you come to a place and you're not open to share and receive the spirit of that place, then you're more indifferent to that place. Yeah, when you come and you're aware and you can, the goal is to make that, you observe a sp and want to have a spiritual connection, then it becomes more meaningful. And I think that's that's a part of the challenge is that us guys, we own for meaningful relationships, yeah? Sure. And so the shallow relationships, we're not that on for. And, and, and when you just wanna have a, a informational connection, then it kind of turns us off. Yeah. Yeah. And then you we put you the into a classification of like, bro, I got to use my, my 18 year old Daniel term donkey. You know what I'm saying? 
You act like a donkey. You'll be treated like a donkey. But then terrible because nobody wants to be acting or being treated like a donkey if they're not a donkey. But then sometimes these humans have the traits of a donkey and then, you know, that's where for me, this is for me, I, and I learned this lesson from from somebody that, that really end up hurting and affecting me in my life. But the lesson was, give people respect when they least deserve it in hopes when you least deserve it, people will give you respect. Yeah, that's a great model to live by. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I've lived by this guy. I really should not like this guy, but his own lesson to me, my takeaway of that was just how... But that's your lesson to me, bro. How easy it is for me uh, super easy. to not give respect when people, you know, when people don't deserve it, it's easy to not give it to them. But the actual high road, yeah, and I, and I, and I, I, sometimes it looks as if people are taking advantage of me, yeah, but I pretty much will give people the opportunity to take advantage of me because they're only cutting their own line. Right. Yeah, the one uncle that, that told Skyler the poi was $6 and then went home with two pounds of poi for $12. That uncle, he don't call me anymore for poi because he know at the end of the day, he, he would kind of make some smooth moves. So he shame for calling me back for poi. And the reality is if uncle ever did call me back for poi, we sold out. Because we sold out of the $6 poi. But we still get huli. We still get poi. We just know more the $6 poi. You like grow them. So, get, really. you know, am I foolish to not want to talk to that uncle? Am I racist against that uncle because that uncle took advantage of, of me with the best intentions, right? Now, I gave that uncle the opportunity to take advantage of me because I never actually tell Skylar the price in advance. I told uncle and uncle in trust. Skylar in trust, uncle. So, you know, there's a complicated story right there, but it, it ties into how we relate to each other how we want to relate to each other, how being wary of people that are not good is a good thing, right? For the antelope to not like the lion is smart. Crazy though, it's like the, it's like the, the trees kept voting for the ox, bro. Because its handle was made of wood and they thought it was a part of them. Yeah, that is an, it's an heavy one, bro. So let's just do a little take takeaway here of things that we're encouraging the next generation to do is one, let's work on judging people by what they do, right? <laughs> let's judge them on what they do. Let's, let's, not judge be, nobody. <laughs> let's be cautious. Let's be cautious about people in general, regardless of their racist, color, bro. regardless of their color, be wary we'll of people. We're saying that. Uh, um, and aliens too. You should be wary of them. Too. Watch out. No judge them. <laughs> but let's not maybe base those judgments particularly on maybe the way they look that that might not be the best most advantageous way to categorize people it when, might be though you know you see you an alien you wouldn't go like that i tell you what <laughs> you know what immediately came to my mind what and I, that's I, what came to mind and i don't live i don't live in this area so i don't know but immediately came to my mind is like what if i was walking through an area where I had one gang and they all wear like one red bandana right and then i would see that i'd be like whoa i would go walk on the other side right right that that's kind of like is that racism or am i being smart to know that hey that gang robbed people like maybe that's what my Part Fiji and mine sees when I see a Caucasian. Oh, that gang robs people, right? I mean, um, that was completely a joke, guys. I'm a quarter Caucasian, just to let you know. So me too. But that part robs my other parts all the time of oxygen. Okay, like Uncle Daniel, what happened, brah? My Caucasian side just subjected my Fijian side to hours of slavery, making poor. <laughs> Okay. Um, ah. This topic, I want to continue this topic, Uncle Carl. That's a generation I do. thing too, right? And I want to put it out there for people <laughs> in our community to the digest and eat. about racism in, in and our I, community. I think it's important because we face as farmers. What divides us? Pretty much the entire community in some way, shape, or form. How from the can, government. How we can put them aside, build one. Write, one. write one song about it. 
All right, Uncle Carl, what's like the, the song? Did, I see the ukulele, the play the song. Sing the song about no bully, right? You heard that one? Uh? Yep, yep. Speaking of music, if you haven't heard Uncle Skippy Iwane, Big Island Conspiracy, check out YouTube, put in Big Island Conspiracy. Mm, mm. You listen to this track. The first 10 times you listen to the track, you can hear one different mana'o. Because yeah. Uncle has carefully woven lyrics and melodies in such a way as to tickle out different emotions from within you, depending on what you would hear Uncle say. So, you might need a lesson in Olelo Hawaii because there's a, a lot of Olelo mixed into it, but yeah. Uncle Skippy. Skippy kind of Olelo. He's a hero in the Hawaiian community. Um, major, major Manao. Major Manao. Major Manao. You know, he puts, he, he, I think he explains it well. Yeah. Um, what we're dealing with. And like, is it something that you pass on? I don't even know where I got this from. Yeah. But it was something that was passed down. Yeah. Um, and um, it's a generational thing. And I think, you know, instead of looking at what is the same problems that we all share, that we can like, I don't know, we will come up with solutions. And for us, the solution, nonstop. You guys know what uncle's answer? Haloa, guarantee, not lying. It does heal relationships. Uh, I, I just it, wanted to it, say it, this, it, Uncle Carl. It is something to build things on. I was thinking about this today as I was cleaning tarot. Yeah? Like cleaning tarot for me, Thursdays is my reset day. Like I can have a super shitty week. Sometimes I get them. We have extremely challenging weeks just in the nature of, of how we live and what we do. Yeah, some weeks grandpa yelling at me for I don't know what, but then I had a junk week because my grandpa yell at me. And then how do I emotionally, spiritually deal with that? Is every Thursday I clean my garage. Yeah, I wake up five o'clock. I'm out there excited. And sometimes my garage is totally destroyed. You, you know what the thing looked like on a regular Friday? It looked uh, yeah. destroyed, right? No, why? But I before you touch them. Cleaning them. Before you touch them. Help well. prepare myself, yeah? And then I go through all of this physical cleaning and then I clean this tarot. And cleaning the tarot has has helped me internalize that period, helps me internalize um, and prioritize my feelings. Yeah, it helps me to digest like really complex things like hate, mistrust, misunderstanding. Like the conversation that I have with myself cleaning tarot, with the kalo while I'm cleaning tarot, oftentimes when I'm having the hardest weeks, the tarot is the worst and the most to clean. Like almost like the tarot had a bad week too. You know, as I, and there's more that I have to clean off, but ultimately it was like I had to clean it off myself. Hmm. But going through that every week, this is just for me, gives me an advantage and how I live life. I don't know, Uncle. I think cleaning the tarot patch for you is that. But but I know for me that without cleaning tarot, I actually would be an angrier person. Yeah, like the simple act of cleaning 40 to 100 pounds of tarot per week makes me more emotionally stable and makes me more conscious about myself. And it's very interesting because a lot of times there's no music that plays. Like it seems like it's cruelty up there. Yeah. Cause everybody got to listen to whoever talking at the time and getting yelled at. But for me, <laughs> it is that one time of the week where like, I just want to hear myself. Like be there with the collar, smell the collar and, and, and deal with all of the things that, that we normally got to deal with. But the fact that I get to do it every Thursday has helped me deal with heavier things to like almost digest it and get through it. And then you talk about the solution as the, is the kalo, you know? And then this, the, the, there's, there's aspects in this that align with how we live life, whether it's cleaning your awai, it's pulling your weeds in your patch. There's a lot of cleaning. There's a lot of physical, conscious, paying attention, right? Yeah. These are all the things that are are almost unchartable. Uh, I mean, how do you chart the paying attention of somebody? Well, maybe you do for the hunters. Yeah, and the hunters that come home with me, you know, they pay attention. And the ones that don't come home with me, maybe they wasn't paying attention. Yeah, like the relationship, right? Like you come and you plant once and then you come back. Probably not going to grow. 
it's like the relationship yeah you know and and um you know i don't know if they're selfish or what for use that as an example of how we're gonna measure our relationship is um, based hey, on just that. To, just to let you know, if yeah. you ever did plant Tara with Uncle Carl, yeah. you never come back. You know? I think about it, about three guys come to my mind, Uncle Carl. Yeah, like, what we trying but to they need cracks. Bro? What we trying to accomplish, yeah, the, 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 the time we're living in right now, bro. Yeah. Consistency, yeah. Like, like, we're not messing around. Like, I don't know, you know, no more playtime. If, if something wants to happen, like, we'll be in a whole world of shit and nobody just realize them, you know? <laughs> and we've been preparing ourselves for being in a position for, for, you know, the fact that the brother is on the video and he on the, the video and he know of this problem, yeah, and that we still no more any information or any advancements in um, uh, more ag lands, yeah, more, up, even talks about it, yeah, like, past the time it was planned for this, Bro, we're right in hurricane season, you know what I mean? And 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 how yeah. crazy is this call? I read an article last week from the um Grassroots Institute where they did a poll of a thousand people because currently only five percent of Hawaii is developed. Total land mass. And these guys yeah. did a poll and their polling was that the community feels that we should increase that. By six to seven percent. I did the math. One percent of Hawaii is forty thousand acres. So at five percent, we have two hundred thousand acres of developed land in Hawaii. And for every one percent is another forty thousand acres of land to be developed. So these guys are talking about increasing increasing development by 40 to 80,000 acres but not once in that conversation i bet you they never even asked those people if they where they thought their food was going to come from for no, this no. next 40,000 acres of development now we come to the consciousness of the water they're not worried about how they're going to grow their food the only worried about is flushing the toilet that's fine yeah and in hawaii the reality is like you add water the house grow everywhere yeah all you got to do is bring the line there and the, the detachment of the the, 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 the the natural resource, yeah, I think start with the keikis and you take them to the puka and you show them, right? Like all of our kids, but the, the, the mainstream is you take any, you pick one random kid out there and you ask him, you know where water comes from? Um, you know, Yeah, his unless, water hose, his sink. Unless you're the parent that taught him that, right? Whose responsibility is that? The kumus at school. I mean, who's I mean, kids think is it, right? they, they don't see cows as hamburger. <laughs> hamburger come in with plastic. Right. Yeah. Right. Fish no more head and tail. Right. So I don't know. I think just like in our own community, from our own households, I think it starts making it seem cool. Um, Being e easy and fast to forgive uh, and apologize. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think we need to be smart uncles and we need to categorize people based on their actions. I think be wary of all people in general. I think these are all safe conscious things, but we have to, you know, find the right people. We have to, right? In this whole big thing we're talking about, we're not going to be able to lead everybody or help everybody. So we got to help those people that want to help other people. Yeah, but help right? themselves first. Yeah. Right, help themselves, help a well. If you're coming to us and you like jam jam, you jamming for jam yourself, right? Like yeah. the guy that come help at the Loi, he will learn how to farm tarot a little bit. So he walking away with an experience and, and going home with knowledge, right? In hopes that given the opportunity, he may want to continue this. Now, your ability out there, people, to continue it are going to be based upon the relationship that you have with the people in the place. So how you do that is you research it. Yeah, you can research this place. And as far as the people are concerned, add a language. That's a great way for research people. Yeah, it's to learn about the language. If you're coming to visit Hawaii, please get acclimated with Olalo Hawaii. 
know that this language was illegal until 1978, almost 100 years. Yeah, a force, oppression. So this is the kind of community that you're moving into, that it has only been 43 years. And I only know this because I was born in 1978. Yeah, so Hawaiian language in Hawaii has only been, you know, and, and, and I want to say legal, but you still can't use it anywhere. But it's used everywhere. If that makes any sense. You can't use it in any official government. Uh, you can't use it in dealing with the government unless you want to be discriminated. But you can't market Hawaii without sliding in on a couple kahakos and okinas. I, I, That's I, where we're at right now. That's the reality of where we're at. And we need to change that where the government is operating in Hawaii. And the people that are marketing Hawaii using Hawaiian are held to a higher standard of malama of the language and the place right because also that as a foreigner coming here you think somehow that you're helping but almost guaranteed the hotel you stayed at paying the cheapest rate for water probably all kind tax evasion kind you know not giving back to the community kind stuff or breaking off tiny chunks right not necessarily i mean the same spot the hotel was used to be when Tarot Patch, if you read about the place in the uh, lobby, right? And then, I mean, you, you rent a car. Like, when you come and visit here, what really helped the people? Probably not much. Yeah. So Maybe, maybe if they stay in the Bishop Estate Hotels. Or well, part goes to Kamehameha Schools for help the kids. Maybe. Mm, but you never go to KS, so we forgot about you. <laughs> um, here's the reality. If you come to Hawaii and you're not physically donating to a community organization your time or your money, the reality is you're not helping us. No. So make that a, a, a change and in, in habit on how you engage tourism as a tourist here. That's a message for all my friends that don't live here. I get plenty of them all over the world. When you come, you can either volunteer money or time. And I'll be honest, your time volunteered is, is more valuable and we appreciate that. Yeah, the, the money is good, it helps us, but the time increases the opportunity for us to work on the things like racism and channel that more towards love and appreciation and compassion of others. Just that we learn those things. We build upon those things. And that's, that's a solution here because yeah. everywhere that you find people farming tarot, you can find grumpy uncles. Straight out. Every island right now, you name the island, I, I would get in trouble if I named the two grumpy uncles that farm tower on that island, okay? But they exist. And they exist because their entire life, people have come and taken advantage of them. Went to take their water or their land or some type capitalize on them. That their general outlook towards life for me is not is what I don't want to pass on to my kids. Yeah, We joke about not being the grumpy uncles when we 80 at the tarot patch. But if that's the case, then we're going to have to work on it. And if you can tell, we, we are working on it. That's the beauty of our relationship. That's why it's two dads farming, right? It's because we're constantly farming, not just the tarot, but each other and our relationships, yeah. right? And as this is important, right? In the tarot patch. Because of the shape of the leaf, when it rains, the taros feed each other. They don't feed themselves. So you actually have to have two or more taros growing besides each other to have a healthy kalo ecosystem. And this, I think, is important. Because when you look at the leaf shape of most other plants, the leaf direction is when the rain comes the, the rain goes to the plant. This is the one where the thing goes for the neighbor. So figure out a way to mimic your ancestor halua and water your neighbor, water your friend. Yeah? Because in the end of the day, as the realities of a global pandemic, economy, shipping, all of this, your neighbor going to end up be one of your most important allies. Outside of your family and your friends, gonna be your neighbor. And I'm not gonna lie, 
of my two neighbors, only one like me. So I got a lot of work to do on that. Yeah, yeah. I want to manifest better relationships with my neighbors. That's your community. It's yep. our community that we live in. We choose to live in. So you might as well make them good. Lessons, <coughs> you guys. <coughs> right here on the Kalo Couch. We want to thank you guys. How are you doing, Uncle Kalo? We had a good, good, good talk story today. You said the word, oh no. Oh no. And um, daddy talk about one young poem about you know, the ability he wished. One of his favorite, like his biggest wishes, if he had the ability for can one bottle of Ono, yeah, so he can go around and spray them on people. <laughs> but that's the, the the part where the, the the numbers get dwindled down to the soldiers, and um, so we gotta come up with a formula that we can mix some Ono inside, yeah. And then, Either ono and some people, and hopefully this. this right, you're not giving away the secret recipe for the sour poi pizza cross, huh? Hopefully you can, you know, inspire some young. Like inside. uncle, that bottle look empty. Oh no, you're extra of that. Yes, what is uh, that? Oh, that's the ono. That's boy. why you get black on black tape on the bottom. You sell so much, you always get left <laughs> when empty. Um, oh no, that's the bottle. Always look empty. The ono, bro. but always getting off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now that's some challenge too is making people have the ono. Um, because unless you get them, and you get other people, we can have come and talk about that too, you know, like grabbing that honor. Like when did it hit you? What about it? You know, why you choose to make any kind like this and be crazy like us for? Isn't it awesome though? How many people have you met in the last six months that have said to you, uncle, I grow tarot because of you. Uncle, thank you so much for doing what you do mm -hmm. and following it, you know? The reality is that, uh, Uncle, you actually is in the bottle and are part of the ingredients of making it ono, you know? And this formula of sharing this information and of being as transparent as we can and honest, not just with each other, but with our community, because we're putting this out there in hopes that future generations, you know, can you imagine this? Can you imagine Anakala Eddie? When he was 43 and 49 with Uncle Walter Paulo sat down and did a podcast and how oh no that would be right now. Can you imagine Uncle Jerry? Can you imagine Cowboy? Can you imagine these kupunas that Uncle Hanale had sat down here and yeah. talked with us for one hour? But that's why hello, I'm not racist. And we cannot be. Because like the most the people who is truly, truly most responsible for hello being around today, we talk about these kupunas. Yeah? We take ten of them. One of them was on Hawaiian. That's the truth and the reality. Yeah, is the Okinawan and the Japanese. Right, if it wasn't for them, it, I'm telling you, the knowledge, the Ike. You know when when you're the kupuna and all get is the one boy, and he gonna get the Ike. A young question, Uncle. What race is the UH? Hmm? What race is the UH? Because the UH, they was the guys that was taking care of them. You know what I'm saying? They're more even one race. It's one institution. Like the reality is like Haloa is here today. Almost like as if a miracle. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. But this is one one true living miracle that after hundred and twenty nine years of occupation that still get ancestral heirloom varieties that go back to the oldest kalos, still get the mo'olelos behind these kalos. Still get the understandings of the different usages. Right. Yeah, still get. So get on your own for these things, brothers and sisters out there listening. Find your variety that you going to take care of for the rest of your life. Raise your baby for be ono for take that kuleana. Yeah. Yeah. One like, of the things we was talking about is creating a database for each one. Like how he grew at your place, how he grew at my place. And then we can recommend, wait, by the way, we're using farm taro. Where you live? Oh, this one grow the best. Oh, and here's the huli. How you know? You never go Google taro. <laughs> and you go on google.taro and then you type in where you live and then the thing give you the yeah, five like, best varieties and which farm was for call. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I like leave is ike. Yeah, something that they can, never mind trying to repeat what we just did. Do it better. Make yeah. it more exciting. Build on it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Use them as a trampoline for jump. Yes. Higher. Yeah, bro. And um, 
No give up. No give up. And the owner. The only difference is time, huh? <sighs> That's the thing. When you own it, you seek it out, yeah? You go out of your way for it, yeah? yeah. When you're craving, when you're craving for Kahlo, it's like, you know, when you're addicted to cigarettes and you wake up in the morning, I got to have a cigarette. When you feel like that for Kahlo, <laughs> and you know what Uncle Kahlo feel like every single day when he wakes up <laughs> in Nanakuli and he drives all the way to, to the, the east traffic. side. Get to the traffic. Too far Everybody down. coming on the west side to thread. It's my truck. Try and forget to Kahana. <laughs> I let you in. No tell me. I don't like when you're tailing me. Junk. Only a joke here, but it's okay if Uncle tells you though, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. No. <laughs> All good, man. How's them? All right, Uncles. Well, let's end this with a pule. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, cool. We're so grateful that you continue to put forth these opportunities and give us a chance to learn and grow mostly about ourselves and each other and the Aina. And thank you for helping to increase our Ono. Yeah, to just work together, to problem solve, to, to be satisfied with simple things like friendship. Mahalo Kilkua for teaching us compassion, and giving us the opportunity to deepen our wisdom and showing us another day, beautiful day. We ask that you guide folks as they return home, protect them on the roads, and bless everyone that they pass. We humbly pray this in the name of all your children, past, present, and future. Yes, sir. Mahalo. Mahalo. Yes, sir. Mahalo. It's a crucial time, a time Through these rainstorms and the thunderclouds We hope in them we have no knowledge about It's a crucial time